dear students uh, very good evening and at the outset i would like to uh, advise you that you must uh, look at the two previous presentations concerning this particular patient one was on the clinical aspect and the second one was the imaging as well as the biopsy that uh, we we discussed how the biopsy is to be taken and uh, even i think we have i've shared the report also with you and today we would be talking about the surgical excision and follow up of the same patient so uh, if you look at the previous presentations i think you will understand today's presentation uh, much better uh, in the true con context well without wasting further time uh, i would uh, give you a short recapitulation about this case this patient was a 2 year old girl who presented to us with a gradually increasing swelling in the distal forearm for the last 6 months this was the clinical presentation when this patient came to us there was a obvious uh, swelling over the distal aspect of the forearm just up to the wrist area the wrist creases you can see on the dorsal aspect and this swelling was also there not only on the dorsal aspect this is the lateral uh, picture taken from the pro lateral aspect because this is the thumb so it is picture taken from the radial aspect and you can see that there is a significant amount of swelling also on the volar aspect not only on the dorsal aspect but also on the volar aspect so this is uh, the important aspect of this that the swelling was covering dorsal radial volar aspect quite significantly uh, we took an x ray of this patient and the x ray was quite mind boggling and it shows you that there is a there is a sort of a separation of the distal radio ulnar articulation and there is a soft tissue swelling you can see the soft tissue swelling here occupying the interosseous space in the distal forearm and this swelling has had a sort of a it has created created an indentation or scalloping or pressure effect on the adjacent radius as well as the ulna so this was a very significant finding in this particular patient in spite of the fact that the essentially the function of the hand was well preserved uh this is what I, we have shown with the arrows the pressure effect as well as the divarication or the separation of the inferior radio ulnar articulation there was some sort of a ballooning of the cortices of the of the radius most probably of the radius here but there was no significant erosion at this stage this was the, the these are the mri pictures the t1 weighted and the t2 weighted we have already discussed this in the previous presentation and that is why i was trying to tell you to revisit those two sessions uh, the important salient point here was that in the cross section in the transverse section it was evident that the tumor is both on the dorsal aspect as well as the volar aspect and it was a sort of a dumbbell in shape dumbbell shaped tumor because of the interosseous it was going through the interosseous space into the flexor compartment and in the coronal plane the it was quite evident that the tendons the tendons somehow had not been invaded or engulfed and that is what the clinical presentation also was 
that both the flexors as well as the extensors of the fingers were working. We, the biopsy report came out to be uh, not a very happy report. It showed an embryonal cell rhabdomyosarcoma. And this is the detailed report. We have already discussed this. Uh, and by the time uh, this patient got the sutures removed and was coming subsequently uh, after the biopsy to us, we found that there was a rapid increase in the size of the swelling, both dorsally as well as on the volar aspect. And this patient was therefore subjected to uh, pre-operative chemotherapy. It was uh, sent to the oncologist, the medical oncologist, and they started a regime of chemotherapy. Uh, we also discussed in the previous sessions that the treatment of such lesions is multidisciplinary. And the, as we said, chemotherapy, surgical resection, and radiation therapy form the three, tri three steps or the three, uh, three pillars of the tripod of treatment, of multidisciplinary treatment of rhabdomyosarcoma. And the chemotherapy which is to be given is vincristine, actinomycin D, and cyclophosphamide, VAC. These are this is these are the drugs which are given. Uh, well, we do not advise you to know the dosages because this is, as I said, the treatment has to be involving various specialties, multidisciplinary, and we have to do our part which is the surgical resection part. It is also, we emphasize that localized rhabdomyosarcoma following this multimodality approach is treatable, can be cured. However, our patient, when subjected to a PET-CT scan, 